none of us are exempted from the jet lag we face every time we travel around the globe. You could be going on a vacation and get prone to jet lags and wonder, what in the devil's creation is this? Well, lo and behold my friends, because we will explain why you can't enjoy your vacations. How to understand time zones? We often notice a time change when we travel to different countries. Or maybe you have a friend, relative or an acquaintance who resides at a place which is a few hours ahead of you. Oh blimey! Is it really time travel? Have your time travel fantasies finally come true and you were already living in it? Well, of course not it. They just live in different time zones. Let us start by thinking about the shape of the Earth. It's a sphere that rotates on its own axis and after every 24 hours, the Earth makes a complete rotation which we can call as completing a whole day. Now imagine shining a flashlight at a globe. Only the front part of it would receive light. The opposite side would be dark. As Earth rotates, different parts of Earth receive sunlight or darkness giving us day and night. As your location on Earth rotates into sunlight, you see the sun rise and when your location rotates out of the sunlight, you see the sunset. Since different parts of Earth enter and exit daylight at different times, we needed different time zones. A time zone can be defined as a region of the globe that observes a uniform standard time for legal, commercial and social purposes. These zones tend to follow the boundaries of countries and their subdivisions instead of strictly following longitude because it is convenient for areas in close commercial or other communication to keep the same time. Purpose of Time Zones So what caused the need to build time zones around the world? Before clocks were invented, people kept time using different instruments to observe the sun's meridian passing at noon. During the 17th century, the pendulum clock was developed. But these clocks were not sufficiently accurate to be used at sea to determine longitude and for scientific time measurement in the 18th century. At some point in human evolution, your ancestors developed the ability to associate routine or astronomical phenomena with the passing of fixed amounts of time, whatever and however they conceived of this quantity. Some of these examples were the rising and setting of the sun, stars and moon each day. The earliest time measuring devices we know of are sundials and water clocks. It used the shape produced by sunlight falling on a vertical rod to show local time. As the name suggests, these used a controlled flow of water to show the passage of time. But like the usage of any obsolete technology, the use of local solar time also became increasingly inconvenient as railways and telecommunications improved. American railroads maintained many different time zones during the late 1800s. Each train station set its own clock, making it difficult to coordinate train schedules and confusing passengers. Time calculation became a serious problem for people traveling by train. Every city in the United States used a different time standard, so there were more than 300 local sun times to choose from. Railroad managers tried to address the problem by establishing 100 railroad 
time zones. Operators of the new railroad lines needed a new time plan that would offer a uniform train schedule for departures and arrivals. So four standard time zones for the continental United States were introduced – Eastern, Central, Mountain and Pacific. International Meridian Conference was held where the International Standard Time System was adopted. The conference established the Greenwich Meridian as the Prime Meridian and Greenwich Mean Time GMT, as the World's Time Standard. The International 24-Hour Time Zone System grew from this in which all zones referred back to GMT on the Prime Meridian. But what's funny is that the observatory moved to Sussex in the 1950s, but the original site remains the Prime Meridian. The problem. But what was the problem? Well, for starters, not everyone accepted the idea of standard time right away. In fact, many countries continue to set their own times today. For example, in China, it's always the same time all across the country. That's despite the fact that China stretches across three standard time zones. Other nations adopted systems that changed their time zones by smaller increments like 15 or 30 minutes. For that reason, there are more time zones than the standard 24 in use today. And this caused more and more problems. Countries have a right to legislate what time zones to use and where to draw the lines. They want their citizens to share the same time in their clocks. But this causes disruption for globalization purposes. So is all this confusion really worth it? Have you ever thought what if these time zones didn't exist at all? So what if we really got rid of the time zones? Well, as a matter of fact, we are not the only ones to wonder this. Economist Steve Hank and astronomer Dick Henry have been very vocal in proposing an end to time zones something they would replace with a system aptly named the Hank Henry date and time. After all, they argue, from a physics standpoint, it's always the same time everywhere in the world. In the plan put forward by Hank and Henry, for instance, 9am would be 9am across the world. However, some people would know 9am as bedtime, while others would see it as the start of the working day. For example, if you were making a conference call to the other side of the planet, you'd have to work out what people usually do at 9am in their part of the world rather than make any early calculations. It could be called universal time. This would make life easier for businesses, countries and airlines. The calendar would be identical every year. Your birthday will always be on the same day. And Christmas will always fall on the same day of the week. Months and year quarters would be more uniform, making accounting and financial practices more straightforward. Except for a one week long mini month at the end of December every five or six years. This would bring the calendar back into sync with seasonal changes. Think of the things you could do with this extra month just laying around there for you to waste around. Think about the people living in space. Orbiting spacecraft typically experience many sunrises and sunsets in a 24-hour period or sometimes even none. Thus, it is not possible to calibrate time zones with respect to the sun and still respect a 24-hour sleep or wake cycle. But coming back to Earth, 
you'd still have to think about where the other person is in their daily cycle. You'd still have that problem. So on the one hand, it could be simpler. We won't have to ask what time zone a person is in because there's only one. It can eliminate a lot of potential confusion. On the other hand, it could make it more difficult to talk about different daily schedules. With time zones, it's easy to say, when it's 9 a.m. here, it's 4 p.m. in New York. And we now have a good idea how our daily schedule relates to theirs. But with no time zones, how would you express this idea? You'd have to say things like, people there usually start work at 4 p.m. Then, if you want to know when they might have lunch or go home from work or go to bed, you'd have to count hours from start of the day for you and add it to their start time so you end up doing a lot of arithmetic in your head, which could be cumbersome. Reality check. But what would this look like in practice? Vast countries like China and India that span a number of Fleming's time zones have only one standard time, perhaps providing a test case for what universal time could look like. Countries have already started moving towards fewer time zones. Since 1949, China has had only a single time zone, even though geographically the country spans five. Despite this, there is only one Beijing time, first instituted by the Communist parties to stimulate a sense of national unity. A lack of locally adapted official hours for work and school means that those furthest from Beijing get up in darkness or head to bed while it's still light. Their lives are three or four hours off of the local solar time. Even Russia abolished two of its time zones, dropping the number from 11 to 9, and even suggested that they may discard more time zones in the future. But jumping from 24 time zones to 1 would be a much larger leap. On some islands in the Pacific, the date would change with the sun high in the sky. People would wake up on Tuesday and go to bed on Wednesday. So the final question is, could universal time solve some of these issues? Well, Hanke proposes that without the strictures imposed by a particular time zone, different locations would be free to tamper with their local working hours and timetables. Although all the clocks would be set to the same time, business hours would vary by location. But the upheaval it could cause is likely to undermine all such theories. People have adapted to this way of living and from the looks of it, there are good chances that you'd have to live in a world with different time zones for longer than you imagine. How do you think your day-to-day -day life would be affected if there were no time zones? Do you think it would be better not to have time zones? Let us know the same in the comments section. If you like this video, then please leave a like so it motivates us to do better. Share with your friends and subscribe for more such informative content.